Hello, I'm Frank Conkling. This is Panda Consulting's RTS workshop. And today what we're going to do is we're going to look at some other tools that are inside the parcel fabric that are used for correcting inside um, some of our, our components. And I'm seeing, I'm hearing from my clients some of the some concerns about it, how to use it, how not to use it. What should I watch out for? And we're seeing things being put up on the community site. So I figure we dig into it a little bit before we start. As always, just want to remind you down here on the um, down here on the lower right side, you see a QR code, which will get you to the Panda Consulting website. Find out who we are, what we do, how we do it, why we do it. Um, please feel free to go out there. You can also find upcoming workshops and register for them. Also, as a reminder, we are an ESRI Silver business partner, have been for 26 years or so. And we have the parcel management specialty designation together with the release ready and state and local government. So let's start. All right. So today, as I mentioned, we're going to look at a couple tools. We're really going to look at two maybe three in depth though the first one's going to be shrink to seed shrink to seed is a way that you can go and take and and look at refining some of the boundaries on there it's a quality driven workflow not necessarily record driven but there's nuances there and then you've got reconstruct from seed which is sort of the second part of it once you've got it shrunk you make some corrections you then go and rebuild it from that but i'm also going to look at must have records one of the Validation rules, which is hidden, is that every feature inside your feature class, inside your parcel fabric, must have a record associated with it. What does that really mean? And then, if we get a chance, we'll start looking at maybe merge points, understanding the topology settings and how they'll impact what you're doing, and then maybe moving and adjusting parcels from that point forward. So let's go down here and, and start looking at things. Often. What happens is um, when we get a new description of a parcel come in, and I'm going to go in and just go and select this, this parcel from this active record. And we've got a new parcel which changes sometimes dramatically, sometimes just in small amounts, the boundaries between existing existing records inside there and how do we handle this how do we go and make sure that this is going to go and fit well correctly how do we go and take for example this boundary here along this property um and make it so coincident with the new one we want to adopt the new one how do how do we handle that thing same way here we've got a gap between these how do we handle that what's the best way to do it and how does these tools really work? As I mentioned, it is a quality driven tool and we have shrink to seed and reconstruct from seed. Thing to remember is that shrink to seed actually does not require a record. I could actually make this inactive, shrink to seed will still work. It's a way to go and take anything and minimize the, the actual polygon and just create a smaller polygon Preserve all the attribution on there and then use that to be able to go and rebuild things. So just real quickly, well, how I can take this, this actual parcel here, this one here, if I go shrink to seeds, it will allow me to go and shrink it to seed. And then from that, when I hey, when I say reconstruct from seed, it will go and reconstruct that boundary. Note it used a different boundary than the original one that was in 10. So let's go and, and look at this again. There's the original boundary here. When I do shrink to seed, it will go and shrink it to seed. When I do reconstruct from seed, it goes and rebuilds that parcel, but it rebuilds it to a different set of lines. Now, what happened to this other set of lines? Let's go and see. So if I go in here and say activate the record and I say, so show me the actual lines that were part of that record, it should go and find them here. 
tab here. And select everything that's a part of that record. I should have my points. Notice I have these here. What happened to my lines? I've got my points still out there. Are my lines historic now? If I zoom in here, they are in fact historic on here, which shrink to seeds. Did I need them to be historic or do I want them to be preserved as historic? That's a question that's going to come up on a case-by-case -case basis. And you're going to have to figure out what's the best way to go and handle that. Let's go back here again and figure out what's going on here. So let's go back to shrink to seed again and see if we can figure out what's really going on. If I have a seed, when I say shrink to seed, it basically just takes the polygon and compresses it into a small, a small polygon. That small polygon, if I go here, actually has 34 square feet. So it's a tiny, tiny thing. If I were to zoom in on it, I could see it's nothing more than a circle. But when I tell it to go and reconstruct from seed, it does something similar to what the, the record workflow does of build. Except the difference is that with reconstruct from seed, it's taking that and expanding it until it intersects the next set of corresponding line types that match that seed. So if I have a seed here, and that's, this seed is a tax parcel now, if I go in here and create some lines, just some, some lines here, I create some lines, Let's go and create that line and finish this. There are some lines. When I say reconstruct from seed, it's going to go out and build this, but it's going to build it to the closest set of the same parcel type lines as that seed is. So if I have subdivisions, it's going to go and look for the closest subdivision lines. If it if I have um lots or conveyance divisions is going to be the same sort of thing for that. So it's going to go and build it out. The difference between reconstruct from seeds and the build is that the build only looks at the lines that are part of the active record. So this allows you the the shrink to seeds and reconstruct from seeds allows you to go and rebuild this without having a record active and it allows you to go and sort of redefine what's happening with your lines. Let's get out of here and go do this again. So what happens if I don't have a closed set of lines and it attempts to go and rebuild this? If I say reconstruct, it will go out to the, the nearest closed set of lines on here. All right. So let's go and explore this a little bit more. If I go in here and select these lines, delete them, select this line, delete them, select this line, and delete that. So if I go and, and want to go and reshape this parcel, I can go in here and say, let's use this line as my new defining line for when I tell it to reconstruct my seed to go and expand it out to the closest same line type in there. So it will go and automatically go and build it out to that same thing. If I were to go and take this one line, all right, and then go and make it a different type of line, let's go and make it a block line or something. All right, and I've cut it. Um, there we go. So let's go and go and undo that cut just so I can make sure that there we go. So I've got this here. I have block lines turned on now. I can now go and cut this and paste it over. 
Um, let's just copy it and paste it over here. There we go. Lock lines on here. What well, I'm really trying to do is just let's do it this way here. Let's go and create a block line here just to illustrate that. Yeah, it it's not going to work on this. It's going to go and bypass that. And it's going to use the nearest same parcel type line as what that polygon is created by. So let's go back here and tell it to reconstruct. And sure enough, it bypasses and goes right to the closest tax parcel lines. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that if you're thinking about rebuilding this and using this technique, um, you want to make sure that you have a couple things that you're aware of. One, that you actually have, you know what type of polygon that is, because you're going to make sure that you're using the same type of lines in order for it to go and be able to be rebuilt. Also, the fact that it, it doesn't need a record on here. So let's go and see if we can apply this one more time. Let's take this work current parcel, shrink it to seed. All right, when we shrink to seed, if we zoom in here, we can notice we still have points all over here, but it has shrink to seed. Let's see immediately what happened with shrink to seed. All of them are marked as historic. We shrink to seed. Now, when I go to reconstruct that, all right, when I tell it to reconstruct this, it will go and automatically reconstruct it out to the closest line. So there are a couple things that it doesn't do that you want to be aware of. And, and by the way, I've, I've seen some of my clients use this as a, a way to get around, maybe a clip routine that didn't quite work correctly. You can do that. Just be aware that the clip is not necessarily going to go and 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 process this the way you might think it's going to. And and again, you want to explore this more to see what is this thing really doing. Let's go and see if we can explore a little bit more here. Because one of the things I want to really look at is I know that there is a validation rule against this. And since I'm not using an active record all the time, what happens when I create lines without having an active record on here? So let's just go and, and look at the rules. Sorry. This is interesting. Hmm. This is a new set, I a new data set I just brought over here. I'm wondering why I don't have access to some of this other components. I don't have my attribute rules in here. There is an attribute rule here. Let's let's look at it a different way. Let's go here. Let's go to data and look at our attribute rules and see what's on here. So we have some rules here. In this case, we have some rules calculating some of the values. But under here, we have an, a, an attribute rule that says must have a record. And if we look at this, it, it says basically What's happening is it's looking to see whether or not all features that are part of this record has a valid created by value inside of it. I'll take that back. I said valid. No, it just makes sure that there is a, a value, which is a, a GUID, um, a value inside the created by record attribute field. And this is a validation rule, which means it doesn't get run until you specifically use the error inspector inside of this. Let's look at this. Okay, so if I go in here and I do shrink to seed, 
all right? And if I go in here and I redefine this boundary using this, if I'm not aware of some of these other rules that are going on and I reconstruct this, I'm going to say, oh, I'm done. This is good. But the reality is if I leave it at that, because from a cartographic standpoint, it looks good. There's lines there. There's points there. If I leave it at that, I'm going to wind up having an issue in the future because it turns out that that rule that all features here have to have a record associated with, with it. So let's go in here and look. And on here, created by record has no value. Retired by record obviously has no value in it. So it it's going to cause, it's going to be a hidden and a, a latent error inside of our data set that eventually will percolate up. Validation rules are similar to topology rules. You can have an error in your data and it's sitting there and it's just waiting for you to go and check because it's no, there's no other thing that says this obviously is a problem. You want to look at it, but that is a problem. To illustrate that, what I've actually done is I've created a line feature class which goes and will show me show me all of my lines that don't have records associated with them and it will go and show me sort of throughout matter of fact i'm i'm getting ready to go in and put an idea onto the community site saying that what we should do is we should also have a parcel layer that says not just that we have a distance mismatch or that there's vertices are too short but no records associated with this and let it go and show us where there are no records associated. Until we do, we can also have this display. And on here, I've gone and just said, retired by record is null and the create by record is null so that there is in fact showing you that these, these lines have problems associated with them and you should clean them up before you go through the whole hassle of, of doing a, a, a validation on it. How do you fix it? Well, first of all, you have to identify it. But once you've identified it, then you want to go and, and make sure that you've got and selected them all. Again, none of these actually have that on here. If I go to my, my actual parcel here, I can go in and identify that and only select that. With the parcel fabric, I can go and activate that record, say, okay, I've got that record activated now. And by the way, that's the one I have here. Now I can go in here and say, take all of these, all of these here, and assign them to that record. It will go and assign them, and you'll note what's happening now is it says, okay, You've got a valid record there. It's not going to display in red anymore. You can be assured that you don't even have to run validate um, on your attribute rules and it will go in and find them. I think it's a good idea to go and do this because it's one of those latent issues that sooner or later you're going to have a problem with. Just as a hint, you want to go and check for features inside your parcel fabric that don't have uh, created by records associated with them. All right. So what did we learn here so far? We learned that this whole concept of shrink to, to seed. Again, let's go and do this one more time. I can shrink that to seed. All right. I can then take all of these components in here and I can redefine what the boundaries are of these components and I can tell it to reconstruct this and it will go and search for the closest lines, closest closed set of lines of the same parcel type on here. So it will go and automatically reconstruct that for me. If I have attribute rules there, it will update my attribute rules as I'm going through because that's a modification of the geometry. So um, it will go and 
and automatically go and update them. By the way, um, if you are here and you've got any questions or comments, please put them over in the chat window. Chris is going to go and he's moderating it. So if you've got anything that way, he can be sure. Um, so we do already have one. I'm so glad I stopped. Is there a way to remove the unused points as part of that one parcel that I went and selected? So in here, we have points in here. Well, one of the things we want to realize is that they really are not unused. They are used, but it's not being displayed right now because they are being used by the historic lines and the historic polygon for that. So that that's one of the things I hear often is that how I, I've got these points here and I'm looking at the display. I don't know what those things, I, they look like they're orphaned out there. The reality is, it will stay there unless, as long as it is connected to a feature. But just be aware that that feature may not be displayed at the moment. So you want to check and make sure you turn on your historic to see if you've got something that's still part of it. To answer your question, can you go and delete those points and so that they're not there anymore? And the answer is the only way you delete them is by deleting the features also that are no longer in there. Because if I were to go in here and delete these points, let's go and select these points right here. Let's only select those two points here. By the way, they're being symbolized as retired points right now. If I were to go and delete them, all right, the next time I do a build of in this case, I build the extent on here. They will come back because the matter of fact, if you if you see, they actually came back as being current or the the actual valid point there, not retired points anymore. So you just want to be aware that if you've got points out there in your parcel fabric, it doesn't mean they're necessarily orphaned. It just means that that they are connected to something you may not have being displayed at the moment, but they are connected to something. And unless or until you delete that thing that they're connected to, you can't absolutely get rid of it. It's always supposed to be there. Another interesting thing I wanted to use with this example, all right? Let me go and turn off my active so that I only see that and let me go in here and select these points here. And only select these points. And, and there are a series of points in there. I'm just going to go and set those as current. And let's see if we've got that, that option here to go and set those points as current now. There they are now all current on here, meaning what did current do? It took out the value on the retired by um, record. So I've got current points here. If I delete them again, if I delete those points, as soon as I go and rebuild my parcel fabric, it's going to re they're going to return because they are meant and intending to satisfy the rule that says that the lines have to have points on the ends of them. Um, I know that Esri is, is working on finding a way to handle that because a lot of us don't want to see them. Currently, it's a symbology issue that as it's retired, it goes and changes the symbology. So you see they're there, but you're they're minimally there. And again, just to go in and show you, if I go and find all those points in here and only select those points and then mark them historic, they will change symbology so that they are barely there, but they're still there. I offer a different way that we can look at this. One in which, and we see this a lot when we're going and migrating from ArcMap parcel fabric into ArcGIS parcel fabric. With the ArcMap parcel fabric, um, 
unless you created what was called line strings, you actually always had vertices at the ends of the lines. And in ArcGIS parcel fabric, if you create two point lines, you'll always have points on the end there. One of the solutions to this is to go in here and actually take, first I'm gonna go and I'm going to delete all those points. All right, delete all those points. And then I'm I'm going to unselect this, unselect this. So I only have that one. These are my points right here. One of the things that you can do to remove those is you can actually take two point lines and merge them into polylines. So I could take this two point lines, which is, you know, I've got these 20 new lines here, I could actually go and merge them into a single polyline. Again, not make it a digitized line, but make it in this case, a, a parcel line. I could merge it in there and I will be left with one, oh, sorry, let me go back here and finish my merge. Go in here. Here, tell it to merge them together. All right, I should be left with, should be left with one. I don't know why it's not doing it. Yeah, I often will go in here and merge this into a single line. By the way, you can, you can tell that this is a live demo. There is nothing that in fact uh, we have done on this. This is historic lines. Let's go and take them and merge them into historic lines here. I don't want to keep the original. I want to use the template that should go and move it into one single. I had keep original on there before. Um, and this is now this one line in here. Parcels. Interesting where it's actually shown up. Uh, but it will go in and merge it into the one single line if you want to go in and get rid of all those points in the middle there. So you want to be aware of that. All right. So let's look at this again. We've looked at shrink to seed. By the way, shrink to seed is, is probably my second favorite tool. And I really applaud Esri for creating this. This is a nice way to do it. I want to make sure that, that you understand, though. Make sure that you fully understand what this thing does before you start using it. But once you do, it's super powerful for, for rebuilding parcels, for, for manipulating them and making them um, be and adjusting them to where they should be. Reconstruct from seed. What does it really do what's it doing with this on here the must have records the validation rules that are associated with every feature class that are part of your parcel types the lines and the polygons all have that validation rule that says this every feature must have a record and make sure you look at ways you can find that so let's look at some of these other things in here there's merge points in here um some interesting things in here. Let's let's go and let's go back here. Let's turn this off. Turn these on. I have a an area here. This area it turns out that it's been remapped, and this green line actually reflects where they want this to be remapped. And I can tell you that these, these green lines, this is actually a polygon is what this is. It's a polygon. It's not a not actual lines in here. So you'll see me do things like, let me go in and rebuild this in a certain way. All right. So one of the things that we just learned about that tool is we can take this 
and use it to remap things on here. Let's go in and get out of here. Let's look at, well, what about if I want to go and take this parcel right here and remap it so that it matches where these green lines are? There's a couple ways of doing it. We can use that tool we just used called shrink to seed. And I can shrink it to seed and my seed is now located there, all right? And if I can go and get these lines, what are lines in here, to go and match these new things, I might be able to go and remap it all over. But if I remember when I said that, that it's going to use the closest set of closed lines for here. So even if I copy the edges of this polygon into my tax parcels. There's also already a line there. There's a line there and a line there. Maybe what I want to do is I want to take this one. Let's go and turn these off for a minute. Um, I want to go and take this one. Turn our blocks off also. Take that parcel and shrink that to seed. All right. Now I know where. Oh, sorry. Too fast. Take this parcel and shrink that to seed. Now that falls inside that green, so that's going to be fine. And then let's take this parcel and shrink that to seed. All right, now well, that'll work. Take this one and shrink that to seed. Well, that one's outside. So maybe we take this one parcel, by the way, that's the seed, and let's move it. And we'll move it into that area there. If we do that, we can use some of what we know here to rebuild these things. By the way, if we look at this, there's actually roads here. We're not going to deal with rebuilding that right now, but just let you know, there's there's other things in here. I'm going to focus on just rebuilding these others. Matter of fact, in order to go and show you this, I'm just going to I'm going to delete it at the moment, just so I could show you. So if I take these lines, all right, if I take these lines and this line, turn this off. Take this line and let's take this line and these lines and these lines. Take these and I'm making sure, and I delete these on here. All right, I still have some here. Again, I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. I've got lines there that I've taken out. I'm now gonna take this remapped area. I think I might've just undone that. Um, there we go, sorry. I should keep taking that one. Oh. Nothing more exciting than watching somebody else do this, right? And I'm going to just leave this here for a minute. I'm going to take these 
three polygons and I'm going to go and copy them. Again, these are polygons in here. I'm going to go and copy them. I'm going to paste them into my parcel line feature class. All right. So if I go and turn this off, turn the remapped off, I now have them all in my, my parcel lines. I've got it being displayed right now where it's showing me that there's no records. Let's turn that off and make it just normal stuff here. So I've gone and told it that these are the new locations on here. But these, as since they copied over as polygons, they actually still are four discrete lines. So what's the next thing I want to do? I want to go and take those and, and split them into Kogo lines. And I want to go and make sure that they are parcel lines that are split into Kogo lines. They are now. So can I go and build my, can I go back here and say, just reconstruct this from seed? What will happen here? Note again, I want to watch out that it only does it to the closest intersection, the closest expansion of these polygons on here. I probably should have done these two also to go and do this. So, again, I want to just sort of show you this is some of the techniques you might want to use. Um, shrink to seed, reconstruct from seed is real helpful. Be aware, though, again, I purposely did this so that I'm creating problems further on down the road. Be aware of that. Make sure you have a record associated with this. How do I re-associate with this record? I can select the parcel, say activate that record. I can then take whatever lines I want to go with and select those lines and then associate those or assign them to that record. They no longer give me error messages. They will work as we need it. That's one option on going and doing all this. Another the way that we can do this, and I'm going to go back here and I'm going to um, go back here, go back even further. And see if I can go back a little bit further past shrink to seats. One more. All right. So that's one option. Let's talk about, we've got a little bit of time yet. Let's talk about these other things. Topology, if we decide instead of trying to go and shrink these and rebuild these, can we do something to go and make these things fit into what we have for this remapped area? There's some interesting parts here. The one thing we want to do is we want to explore topology and what topology means when we're moving things when we're going in and changing things up. If we have no topology set on our topology setting, it means that the only things that will be impacted by this is what is selected. If I have one line set here, I do one line here, turn this off, that off, that off. All I have is one line and I decide to move that line. The only thing that will get impacted by that is that one line. Go in here, it does and basically disconnects itself because I had no topology on here will be, that's all it's going to do is, is do that. If I have, if I have map topology on here and I tell it to move, it will go and analyze what's being displayed at the moment and 
then go and rubber sheet, and you can see the rubber sheeting here and here, rubber sheet, not just what I have selected, but anything that's connected to that component on here using map topology. Map topology only works with things that are currently being displayed. So if I go to say, yeah, go ahead and do this, it will go and modify that. However, if I look, I have blocks that were part of this that are not being modified now. All right. So if I have map topology, it will not go and, and move anything that's connected to it, but not being displayed. Let's go back here one more time. Let's go back off of this. One more time. Let's go here. So now I have this. And instead of map topology, if I go to my geodatabase topology and say, now let me go and move this, whether I have it turned on or not, it should also go and modify Is it not doing that? Should actually have gone through there and modified the blocks and everything, but I did not see. I did not see this in here. I know if I have this on, it will go and modify it. Yeah, there's again, this is uh a data set that I just moved over here and was playing around with earlier. So if I have parcel fabric topology in here, it will have it so that it will modify everything that's selected as part of that feature class on here. Go and see if we have anything here. No. I don't see any any rubber banding going on. All right, so why do I need to understand that? Why do I need to know that? Because as I'm making modifications here, I wanna be able to go and beforehand know what's gonna move on this. So let's look at our tools. And so go here. If I go and take a parcel and select a parcel and move it, on parcel frank. If I select a parcel and move it, all right, I want to make sure that it's going to move. Let's do it this way. I want to make sure that it's going to move everything that's associated with it. So if I go and move it and decide to go and snap it to here, if I turn this on, I can set my snap anchor here and say, let's snap it so that it moves over to that point there. And it will go and snap it into place there. So it's one of the things that you can often do on here. But if you look, unless there's an exact match here, it, it doesn't seem to make much sense to do that. The move will only work if it's the same configuration. There's other tools though. There is in fact, a transform tool. The transform tool allows you to go and redefine where things are moved. So if I go in here, I can redefine that this point goes to here. And maybe let's, let's go here. This point goes to here. Let's go this point goes to here. This point goes to here. This one goes to here. This point goes to here. So I can redefine it similar to what the old arc map uh, join used to do. And I can tell it to go ahead and transform this and it will go and move it over into that same sort of connection on here. So I could go and say, well, let's go and take this parcel, this parcel here, and take and transform that by taking this one here and this one here, this one here, and this one here, and saying, let's go ahead and transform it. 
All right. So I could reshape these things without shrinking to see it and expanding it. By the way, these are this is the blocks component in here that I've been working around here. So um, I'm not even sure on this data set. The blocks are part of that topology. So I see I have a I have a, a question. Well, which one of these works best with curves? None. None of them works best with curves. Instead, what you want to do is recognize that if you have a curve, you're going to probably work some combination of moving the points over, which is what the transform will do. It will move the points and we'll move the lines over here. And then also go and you're going to have to go and use something like the align feature to redefine the geometry so that it matches that curve. Let's use that sort of to close off um, our discussions here. And let's see if we can come up with some curve component on here. Maybe this is one of the best things here. So let's go in and use what we were just kind of working on. Take this parcel, not that one, this parcel, this parcel and try to make it fit inside of this area here. We can tell it that we can go here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here. By the way, let's get rid of that. We don't need an active record now. Was that rack active record doing anything, by the way? It was not because we were not creating or deleting the act. We were only moving things. The active record will not go and make any change or any difference on here. All right. So let's see if we can go and transform this here. All right. And it was not very good. Let's go and work on this a little bit more. Here to here, here to here. Here to here. Frank, are you here? Yes. When you're done uh, giving this example, Heather would like to know if you could also use the replace geometry tool to accomplish this. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. Thank you, Heather. Um, you could use that. Um, what I was going to do is I was going to go in and attempt to show you. And by the way, I'm looking at why that's not quite working the way I expect it to work. I'm going to go and use the First, I'll use the align features to tool to go and show you the curve and making a curve fit in here. Let's go to uh, align features. All right, align features tool. What it does is it will go in. Let me go in and use the endpoint curve. Align features tool will allow me to go and define a path. All right. Again, I want to be careful with what my topology is setting at. And with that path, I can define sort of a tolerance and say that all vertices within, let's go and make it a little bit wider. All vertices within this will now be moved to the location of that path. So from that, I will tell it to go and realign all of these things. My topology graph says, I cannot do that because it's going to, to go and delete some elements on here. I'm going to go and turn off my topology. I'm going to say here to here to here and do it with no topology. And it will go and realign it. Again, it's, you, you want to watch what's happening here and Let's go and do this from scratch here. So I were going to do this. I would start with my curve. Actually, I go here, here, to here, put a curve in here, make it fit there, put the here, here, and here, right? And tell it to go and realign this. I missed some of this wasn't inside of my my line here I 
I want to go and realign it. So I would do that. That's one way to do it is the align features. Just be aware it's taking your features and moving them over on here. Let's go and go back here. Another way of doing this, and we can turn off our links and our anchor points on here and our links on here. Another way of doing this is the replace geometry tool. With replace geometry, you want to be aware that it's only going to work on, on certain components. But with this, it's going to change the geometry of here. So I can actually go and tell it to do the same sort of thing. I'm going to go and use a curve here. I'm being sloppy when I'm doing this, but replace geometry will do the same thing. It will only do what's selected though. So you just want to be aware of that. You know, I've, I've gone around and rambled quite a bit on here, but I just want you to understand that the modification and adjusting of parcels, we have some very, very powerful tools in here, especially as it relates to the parcel fabric. Shrink to seed, reconstruct from seed, merge points, the topology settings and the impacts they have, and some of the moving and adjusting parcels tools. We have aligned features, we have replaced geometry, um, we have the transform tool. We have a lot of tools in here to help us move these things. And we just want to make sure that we understand what they're doing and how they're working to really let us become better and better at what we're doing. So I have one more question I see. And any other yeah. questions? Because I'm getting ready to finish out. Any other questions, please put them in there. What does this do to the underlying Kogo? Does it make it calculated? So... Let's look at some of the things in here. The, the, uh, the, um, the transform tool moves the endpoints of the Kogo. Let's go and turn on our, our labels here. All right. And now let's actually go and create a parcel line. And let's mark it, just attribute that. So let's say that this is, you know, 45 degrees southeast. And and a distance of Let's call this 200 feet. Okay, so if we go and mark this as being a Kogo type of entered on here, we now have a Kogo line that has these values on here. If we go and just like if we go in here and say, well, let's, let's go and edit this, let's go and edit the vertices on here and move this around. When we do that, it does not change the attributes of the Kogo fields. Same way if we do a transform on here. If I go in here and do a transform on this and say, take this line and move it here and let's go and turn our links back on. And this one and move it here. All right. And Let's just do a rubber sheeting on here so it works. When we do that, it does not change the Kogo values on here. The only time the Kogo values will change and correspondingly, the Kogo type value gets changed is if we specifically do something to it, such as a split or a divide or a clip or something on there where it actually says we're we're impacting this feature. So rerun some of these components on here. And just to, to illustrate, if I go in here and I split 
no, 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 no. If I go in here, select this line, unselect this. If I go in here and do a split here, and an interactive split, it will go, well, yeah, I've got some, Uh, split policy on here. Thank you. No, I've got a split policy on this. Sorry. Um, let's do a divide. Let's go in. Frank. Yes. What if you modify the feature and then use the update Kogo tool? Well, if I modify the, the feature, then if update. I, if I modify the feature and then use update Kogo, by the way, this went in and changed it to computed like it's supposed to be it's computed value on there if i go back here and you said modify the feature some way such as moving the vertices or something yeah stretch or, it shrink it yeah okay so let's just go like in. you did before all right let's go and edit this stretch it sync it now if i go and update kogo it's going to update the kogo of the actual feature length so it's going to Update Kogo is actually recalculating, or what we in survey call inversing the values here, and it's going to go and update them. All right, so it's going to go and update them. It's also going to change that to from geometry in the parcel fabric. Um, so, I'll do that, Kogo. So, so to answer your first question, it doesn't change the Kogo. Those are just standard attribute values that are on there and unless you use a tool to clip it or something else it's not going to make a change so the next question is what what method would you recommend if you had thousands of parcels to adjust like this is there a method that would be most effective for a bulk feature modification um the answer is no there is no method that you can use and automatically go and adjust everything on here. The one that seems most consistent often is if you, you can use a transform, but even that has problems on it. It's almost as if you take a, an individual situation and you analyze what's the most effective way to do this one. And, and, this is where often I'm the bearer of bad news. When I when I talk to people about readjustments and they're like, well, isn't there an easy way for me to go and fix this? Oftentimes, and again, oftentimes there is no easy way to fix bad mapping other than start from scratch or redo it from a place that you have you have confidence in. The reality is because maps and parcels specifically are all related to one another, when you start messing with one, you start impacting the others around it, you start causing problems to ripple through and you might sort of be able to go and correct one or two parcels. Can you create other issues? Yes, you can. Um, so. My recommendation is always if you have a lot of things that have to be fixed, really evaluate them and think about maybe mapping them separately and get getting that consistent so you're comfortable with that mapping. And then maybe looking at appending that and replacing what you've got in there now. Analyzing what's a value that you have and what's not a value and has to be fixed and approaching it from that manner. All right, so bottom line, understand your data, understand the tools that you have, and recognize that never is there one approach. There's always different approaches to get you to the same place. Hopefully when you're done, if you've done it correctly, you'll wind up with a better set of data. All right. Thank you for indulging me.
hopefully you learned something on here. I'll, hopefully you something learned you learned something about the tools. But I hope you enjoyed this one way or the other. All right. Thanks again.